what we're doing, guys, right now. You see those, see those kayakers down there? Look at those guys. Down the pooter. Here, can you show them show yeah. what's going on over there? Cause we're gonna be legends. Gonna get their attention. We need to talk to you about uh, life, dreams, and time. So one thing I haven't brought up recently is that I've had I've had about I've had more than this, but I've had two very clear um, near death experiences myself. Very recently. Recently, within like the past five recently. years. Yeah. The first one, I was at a gun range, and a piece of bullet shrapnel ricocheted off of a piece of steel, and it went back and it hit me in the abdomen went through my ab muscles and up against my intestines. You and could see the mark. I saw the scar, yeah. Um, on the inside of his abdomen where the shrapnel stopped. It stopped right before in. my uh, fascia, fa fa fascia. fascia yeah. yeah. And then the second one recently was last month. Um, I have some genetic clotting factors and I've been very conscious of that. I didn't know that I had as many as I do. And I've been very anal about my health and trying to make sure that I didn't have a large blood clot. And last month on the 8th, I started feeling sick, getting chills and a fever, and my legs started swelling up. And I've already had superficial clots before. It's how, yeah, it wasn't um, the, the chills and the, the sick feeling was new. Yeah. The leg pain has I just I felt before. weird is the but, best way to describe it. Yeah. And so she, Christine had me go to the hospital, and uh, sure enough, I had a DVT in my right leg, uh, a little bit above my knee, all the way down to my ankle. And so that could have been a pulmonary pul uh, could have been a pulmonary embolism, and I could have been not here right now talking to you. So for me, uh, these two experiences, as well as all the stress of entrepreneurship and all the, all the decisions that we've made, have had an extreme focusing effect for me. I don't think most people are really conscious of what they're doing here, why they're here. Um, either they're distracting themselves from reality because it's too difficult to, to process. In other words, they're getting drunk every night and doing stupid shit. A lot shit. of people take life for granted yeah. unless they have a reason not to, which is either near-death experience or you know a loved one or someone close to them has either died or had a near-death experience. So or, I think, or their life was drastically changed by yeah, an accident. You know? I mean, I... I know a lot of people take life for granted and you know oh, we're here for a hundred years or you know don't even think about it a hundred years is nothing yeah. and yeah. realistically by the time you're what 75 are you really mm -hmm. do you really have 25 more years of life like you did before those 75 years probably not and here, so, here's an interesting you know. thought based on what she's saying too is that the time your experience of time is relative to your experience of time so in other words, the more time you experience, the more of a yardstick you have that you can use to measure time. And so, you know, like when you're a little kid, right? Yeah. And you're putting a time out for misbehavior as a consequence, it feels like an eon because your yardstick for measuring time is just that. It's like, what, five years? Mm -hmm. As you get older, your yardstick for measuring time is longer and longer and longer. And so time is relative in that way um, a good example another one is um, when you're a kid and you're waiting for Christmas yeah it seems like forever and now we're parents and Christmas is like oh it's snap seems... your fingers and Christmas is here <laughs> literally I mean it's unbelievable didn't we just have Christmas I and know it, it feels like it's it just well we just basically did yeah so the whole point here and the reason we're bringing this topic up is that I want to uh, I want to I want to basically bring an argument to you that you should be carefully considering what you want to do with the time that you have left. And I'm going to bring it to you from an emotional perspective as well as a rational perspective. So a lot of people that I know, they process information. They process the reality from a very emotional perspective, maybe they're spiritual. And that's not, not a negative at all. I mean, that's just, just how they see things. And so if you see things from an emotional, spiritual perspective, then you should consider that maybe you do have a higher purpose. Maybe you are special. You know, we're each special in our own way in terms of what we can bring 
to the world, to this reality, right? So I want you to really reflect if that's your perspective and ask yourself, you know, what am I, what am I, what, am, what was I put here to do? Or you know, what can I contribute? And the other one is a more uh, intellectual and rational objective perspective, which is if you, if you look at the time that you have here and you don't want to let yourself slide into nihilism, then the most logical thing to do is to maximize the time you have, right? And so if you want to do something, whether that be start a business or travel the world or, or whatever it is you want to do, don't get caught up in the, the, anal- the paralysis of analysis. Just go, analysis paralysis. Just, yeah, analysis paralysis. Just go do yeah. it. I mean, just do it. Don't wait. Don't. And then that's what we were talking about earlier. Is don't, don't wait for other people. Don't try and drag other people along. Do you? Do what you want to do. And if other people want to come along and join in, then all the better. But don't, don't stop yourself from doing something because you're. Oh, I'm, I'm waiting for the right for moment. The right moment. Or I'm waiting it's for never this gonna to come. Happen. Yeah. Just do it. I'm waiting for all the pieces to fall into place. They won't. Never will. They won't. Now, something will come up. Something will happen. There there will always be something else that stops you from doing whatever it is that you want to do. Yep. Think of it this way. There's a quote I saw this morning, which is, uh, in order to travel to distant lands, you have to leave the shore. And most people don't want to leave the shore um, because you lose sight of it. You know safety, I mean? it's safety. security. It's it's where everything is. It's your food, your house, your yeah. your life. And you got to keep in mind too. I mean, people like to separate themselves intellectually from or mentally from, you know, being an animal. But that's what you are. You're an animal. Last night, strange, strange, you know, example. I was tearing apart a chicken car- carcass and eating it. You know, and and, and people it was kid them. Yeah, it was there's, a of course it was one. cooked. You know, but people kid themselves. <laughs> No, you're you're you're, you're an, an animal. animal. You're an animal, yeah. and you have you're you're gonna have instincts, and you're gonna have drives, and you're gonna have behaviors that are connected to being an animal. And one of those is preference for safety, and preference for you know you don't want to you don't want to mess up your food supply. You don't want to mess up you know your your social circle. But if you can rise above that, man, I'll tell you right now, you're gonna you're gonna live a life that other people are gonna be jealous of. I will be great. Your life will be, it'll be scary. There'll oh, be yeah. there'll be months where you almost don't make the rent. There's yeah. gonna be months where maybe your health fails you. But you know what? At least you're doing something with the time you have. You don't wanna, you know, God forbid you you get cancer or you know something life threatening, and you sit there and you go, well, shit, now my life's over. Yeah. All my dreams that I've been waiting for the perfect time. To do? To do. It, it's done. You can't do it anymore. Don't wait for that time. Here's a principle from Stoicism as well that I think you can apply to this, which is to treat every day as if it's a new life and that when you die or when you go to sleep, it's like essentially death, right? And then you wake up and then you, you have the gift like of life reborn. again. Being reborn. Get out there and make something happen, guys. We believe in you.